climate protesters from across the nation are planning to come together in Washington, D.C. on April 29th, Donald Trump's 100th day in office. Again, this was planned long ago, but this week's signing of those executive orders has lit a new fire, as has EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt's wholehearted embrace of the president's action, which he says is about ending what he calls the regulatory assault on our economy. We're not going to allow regulations here at the EPA to pick winners and losers. The president, by his signature today, is rejecting the narrative that this country cannot be both pro-energy and pro-environment. We have done that throughout our history. We can actually achieve good jobs, good growth, and pro-energy policies at the same time of protecting our environment. Joining me now is Pruitt's predecessor, the former EPA administrator under Barack Obama, stepped down this January after more than three years as head of the agency, Boston native, that's the operative expression, <laughs> Gina McCarthy, she's now at the Harvard Institute of Politics. Pleasure to meet you. Thanks so much. It's great to be here, Jim. Thanks. You were on with Judy Woodruff the other night, one yes. of our faves, and you said it's going to be a difficult slog for this administration right. to undo the great work we've done the prior eight years. That's a heartening message to a lot of people. Yeah. Why is it going to be difficult? Because we really worked hard at it. What does that yeah. mean? Well, it means we took about four years to write the Clean Power Plan, which is uh, one of the signature pieces, which led to really strong domestic action and, and really brought the world together, I think, in Paris. It's one of the rules that he wants to eliminate. Mm -hmm. But you cannot eliminate a rule that's a public process that takes a long time with a clear record with the stroke of a pen. But what is that? Are you saying that he can't do it quickly or he'll have a hard time doing it at all? Both. Well, I am saying he can't do it part? quickly. Why the well, at all Well, because we, it's based on the science, it's based on facts, and it's based on the law. So the rule Which we, of those does he care about? Science, facts, law? I actually, he's, he's having trouble with all of them mm -hmm. right, right at this moment because, frankly, the whole basis for doing this is as if we're changing the world with the clean power plan. What he doesn't realize and seem to recognize is that the energy world has changed. States, mayors, utilities are investing in renewable energy and, and they're investing in jobs in the clean energy sector. And there's a simple reason for this, Jim. It saves money. It's the economic choice now. And that's not going to change just because the president's decided that he wants to go back 20 or 30 years to living differently. But when there's a this this cloud, for lack of a better expression. I won't say it's a storm. I would have until I spoke to you. A cloud hanging. Will that investment continue? I mean, Ed Markey told us today on the radio, a guy you know, I'm sure quite well, another yeah, local sure. guy, uh, said that there are 100,000 clean energy jobs in Massachusetts. That's right. With this direction, even if it's not as bad as others say, are we going to still have 100,000 jobs? Is there still going to be this level of investment here and around the country in clean energy? I believe that the clean energy transition, this train's left the station, Jim. Yeah, you're going to have those jobs and it's going to continue. What you're going to see is a lot of wrangling in the courts. And frankly, it's, it's kind of an embarrassing signal to send in the international community that the U.S. has decided that, that we don't want to invest in clean energy anymore and recognize how fast that's growing. But others, other countries will actually fill in for us. But I think the disappointing thing is this really isn't good for the economy. It's simply going to, to really challenge us in terms of air quality and water quality, never mind the, the uh, climate which is really impacting our kids' future. I don't mean to obsess on your, what I, your surprising answer yeah. uh, to start this, uh, but let me just for a second, again, with Ed Markey, who has yes. spent much of his career yes. working on this stuff, as I know you have. Mm -hmm. I said to him today, uh, even though the president says he isn't taking actions to withdraw from the Paris agreements uh, yet, uh, do not his actions here essentially guarantee that we can't meet those goals? And he said, without missing a beat, Yes, it does guarantee we can't meet those goals. So if you're saying it's not that bad and Markey's saying we're never going to be able let to comply with the Paris Agreement, where's the divide yeah, here? Let me tell you where this fits in. What the Clean Power Plan did, this is the rule that set standards for utilities mm -hmm. in terms of generation. That's the big rule here is that it said basically you have to taper down your, your greenhouse gas emissions till 2030, and we set a goal back then. But what we're already seeing is states, many of the states, many who are suing, are actually achieving the goals we set in 2022 already. So I'm not suggesting that this isn't a bad signal. What I'm suggesting is a couple of things. I know how hard it is to do a rule. It takes governing. It takes leadership. It takes a public process. And in this case, it's going to take 
convincing 70 percent of the American public things they don't believe anymore, that climate change isn't happening and that it isn't good for our environment and our kids. And to you also seem to be saying that what energy. some of those people said in that report from Adam Riley is the states can be the buffer here. I mean, the Californias, the Massachusetts, the New Yorks. Absolutely. They can be the I want to get to that 70 percent thing. Yeah. Is it, let me put up, you know, Donald Trump a million times in this campaign said saying things like this. This is from a speech in South Carolina. So Obama's talking about all this with the global warming and the, a, a lot of it's a hoax. I want to use hairspray. He said a million times it's a hoax. It's perpetrated by China. So what do you say to those who say this may be horrible in the mind of Gina McCarthy and a lot of people like you? Everybody who voted for this guy yeah. heard him say it's a hoax. We're not going to do this global warming thing. They knew what they were buying and they bought a guy who just doesn't believe in this. So them's the breaks. Well, I, you know, we all vote for people. We like some things they stand for. We don't like others. When push comes to shove, everybody likes clean air. Everybody likes everybody clean likes water. Everybody likes breathing. That is and a we very really good like to have safe communities and a strong economy. What he's suggesting is that the world as it exists today and as we're seeing it head is simply not the fact of life. He wants to go backwards. This country never goes backwards, Jim. Come on. Let's be well, a little tougher here. They almost here. went backwards what on health care last Friday. Well, I guess they didn't. Though. What we will lose is, is there is a need for continued innovation and investment. The Clean Power Plan makes that stable and certain investment Understood. possible out to 2030. That's where we may lose some ground. Scott Pruitt, when he was the Oklahoma Attorney General, sued you and the EPA. Did you ever meet him during these? Uh, I things? did. What was what? I actually met him at the D.C. Circuit oral arguments in the Clean Power Plan when On we did lawsuit? really good and he walked out a very unhappy And man. what was your impression of him? He was very polite. He did you offer? Nice. I am told that, like almost everybody who leaves yeah. an office like yours, you offered him assistance. I did. And, and what was his response? I did not hear from him. You have not, not, not nothing back. No. You, uh, you know, uh, Bill McKibben, who we obviously all know, who really started yes. this whole thing with the end of nature 25 years ago, tweeted this morning that, that, that the energy department, some supervisor, had put out a memo saying, "You shall not use the words climate change, emissions reduction, or Paris Agreement in your memos." Is that true, as far as you know? I read the same thing, and I do not know the okay. answer to that question. It would be frightening if that were the case, because, you know, we're supposed to be science and credible and professional. Can we talk now to Gina McCarthy, the human, yeah. rather sure. than Gina McCarthy, the former EPA administrator? How hard is this? For, I mean, you spent your whole life. Yeah. Not only you finally reached the top of the pyramid, yeah. you were not far below before. How hard is this to see yeah. people in power, and not just Donald Trump and not just Pruitt, working to undo what you and people like Barack Obama have done for years. Well, you know, I'm trying to give you an, an honest look at, at the fact that I think this is going to be hard for them, but you know, I can't say this is easy for me to watch. What's it like for you? I really love the 15,000 people at EPA. I think they do a great job. I think what we're doing is, is core values of this country. I don't think there is a difference between the economy and the environment. One supports the other, doesn't it? Would we really want to live here and enjoy our life here if it did, we didn't have clean drinking water and clean air? And so it's, it's bothersome, but it bothers me more as a mother, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it bothers me more for my kids in their future than it's a personal issue for me. Have you me. spoken to Barack Obama since you left? Uh, I have not. Well, not since right after. How's your blood pressure? Uh, it's, I'm actually relaxing, but um, uh, it's, it's, it fluctuates depending upon whether I read the paper <laughs> or, or not. Uh, unfortunately, I've been reading it. Thanks All right, so much Jim, for your thanks. time. It was Former really head fun. of the EPA.